Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Tyler Ruggy. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm gonna be giving you guys some updates on my animals because I've been really bad at keeping you guys up to date on everything that's going on. There's just been a lot. As you guys know, I have a lot of animals and it's just hard to keep you guys up to date on everything that happens. So once in a while, once in a while, it's helpful to just, so once in a while, once in a while, it is helpful to do one of these update videos to just lay everything out, everything that's happened. There's a lot of good things, good news. There's also bad news. This is brought to you by the coldest water bottle for keeping me hydrated. So yeah, I thought it would be fun to film in front of the turtle tank. And also I decided we could also have Gypsy in frame because I have this really cool suction cup perch. Yeah, I'm just gonna be updating you guys on animals that you guys ask me about all the time. And probably, hopefully, sometime next week, I'm gonna film an All My Pets video so I can just show you guys all of the pets that I have. Hello everyone, it is Tyler from like three weeks later and I'm just letting you know that the All My Pets video still hasn't been filmed, but I will be getting to it soon. Isn't that right, Gizzy? He's like, no, you're not. Isn't that right, Gibby? So first, we can start with Turtle, I guess. Some people have been asking about Turtle because I haven't really done many videos about Turtle. For anyone who doesn't know, Turtle is an old man who was uh, rehomed to me. He was previously kept in like a 20 gallon tank and now he's kept in this this tank and I also want to point out there is a basking ledge right here like a little area he can come up out of the water and bask in and it has like heat and UVB and everything just because people don't always see this and they're like aren't you supposed to let your turtle bask it can't just be in water all the time so I want to let you know he has a place to bask turtles doing really good he's thriving living his best life so moving on next my birds gypsy is doing good. For anyone who wasn't aware before, uh, last year I had a little bit of a scare with Gypsy because she started plucking again. Um, and I say again because she had a little bit of a plucking issue when I first got her, which was totally understandable because there was so many changes going on in her life because uh, I rescued her. Unfortunately, a lot of the time when a bird like an African Grey starts plucking, it'll just be something that they can go back to at any point in time. So she started plucking again last summer and it was kind of bad. I was able to fix it for the most part. Like I was able to get her to stop plucking and she still does a little bit here and there. And if you look, you can kind of see a little bit of a bald spot on her neck. There's just one spot that she still likes to pick at sometimes, but other than that, it has improved so much. And honestly, I'll take it, Gypsy. I wish you would just stop altogether, but it's improved. So Gypsy's doing good. Still have Gizmo, which you can probably hear him. He was on the verge of having a tantrum, but I think he's calmed down. Gizmo is also doing good. Gizmo is almost 30 years old. So that's crazy. I think he turns 30 next year. Bad news time. The bad news would have to do with the water snake that I rescued from outside. So for anyone who, again, I just feel like I need to update in case you haven't seen the videos. I had a water snake that I found outside. It was very badly injured. There's a degloving wound. Skin was like ripped off and peeled back in a couple places and I decided to bring her in and try to treat her wounds. I tried to find a licensed rehabilitator that would take her in. Couldn't find anyone who had taken a water snake. So I looked up if it was legal to keep the snake myself and you could keep the snake as long as you had a certain permit, which I have. So I kept it and tried to rehabilitate it in my care. It ended up being pregnant. So it gave birth to a bunch of little water snake babies, which I then took and released back where I found the water snake. I was basically trying to treat the water snake's wounds. And for the first few weeks that the water snake was in my care, she would not eat anything. So I was trying to feed her different things. I did try feeding her small rodents. I tried a couple different types of fish 
and just whatever. I was putting anything I could in there just to see if I could get her to eat something. She wasn't eating for a few weeks, which was really alarming because obviously uh, she was carrying a bunch of baby snakes inside of her and gave birth to them and that's super taxing on their bodies and you always want to make sure when an animal is going through that it's really well fed especially after giving birth but she just didn't want to eat i didn't really blame her though because i yoinked her from outside and she just gave birth she was probably under a lot of stress but because of how bad her wounds were i knew if i just let her go back outside it would probably end up getting infected and she'd probably end up dying anyway so i was trying to get her to eat and she did end up actually starting to eat after the first few weeks. So I was giving her food. I was mostly feeding her fish. And uh, they're like the little silver sides that you can buy frozen at the pet store. She was eating and she was doing good. I was treating her wounds. I was like soaking her in an iodine bath and putting Neosporin on it. And she was improving, like her, her wounds were healing and she uh, was eating, but I did notice despite her eating pretty consistently, it didn't seem like she was putting on very much weight. After she gave birth to all the babies, you could tell she was pretty skinny, and so I was really worried about it, and uh, I was so happy when she started eating, but I noticed she wasn't putting on very much weight, at which point I was like, maybe she has some sort of parasites or something, because sometimes that can be the case if an animal's eating, but it's not putting on very much weight, is there could be some sort of parasite, and that was actually pretty likely, because she was outside, she's a wild animal, and they often do carry parasites. So that was a heavy possibility. The only issue was there weren't any vets that would take her in either. Like. Back when I tried to find the rehabilitator for her, I was also trying to see if there was any vets that would take her in, but the vets around me don't take in wild animals, so I was screwed. <laughs> I am aware of how to treat a snake for parasites, and that's what I was planning on doing, was treating her for parasites just in case she had them. Before I even got the chance to order the parasite treatment, she unfortunately ended up passing away. I'm glad that I took her in and I'm glad that I tried to help her and treat her wounds. Because again, if I just left her, then she probably would have inevitably, she inevitably, Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up. Okay. She inevitably would have ended up dying if I just let her go with the wounds as bad as they were. So I'm glad I at least gave her a chance and tried to help out. It did not work, unfortunately, though. And then we have my tortoise, Letty. I'm gonna go get her so that she can also be here with us. Gypsy, this way, come back. So this is Letty, my sulcata tortoise, and she is the animal that I was not prepared to have because I found her outside in a parking lot in Michigan in like October. So her story is just that I found her outside, tried to find her owners, don't really think she was missing. I think someone probably released her because I never found anyone looking for her. And I love her, like she is so good and she's been doing really well. I set her up with a huge Zen Habitats enclosure in my basement and it's been working really well for her. It's like two enclosures put together with a connector. And by the way, if you guys are interested in getting a Zen Habitats, my affiliate link will be down in the description below. I want to make an outdoor enclosure for her at some point because I'd love to be able to keep her outside during the summer when it's nice out. So far, I am still keeping her. She's just a very cute turtle. She is a good one. Fun fact, tortoises are a type of turtle. I've gotten people who are like, wow, you have no idea what the hell you're talking about. You call that thing a turtle and it's obviously a tortoise, but tortoises are in fact a type of turtle. This is a turtle and turtle, come here. Come here, turtle, come here. This is also a turtle. So are the turtles friends?
Ooh, Ooh another <laughs> animal that I want to update you guys on. This is another one that's bad news. We're just gonna go back and forth between good and bad, I guess. So, Egret, who is my jaguar carpet python, is also not doing very well. So I was gonna do a video just about her and I still probably will at some point because I might be downgrading her enclosure because she's in a really big, she's in one of those four foot by two foot by two foot zen habitats. Again, that enclosure has been wonderful for her and she's very small for that enclosure. Like I thought I was doing such a good thing because I was putting her in this big enclosure. The issue is she has neurological issues and as she's grown bigger, they have gotten a lot worse. So the jaguar gene is similar to like the spider gene in ball pythons in the way that they cause the animal to have neurological issues and the severity of them can vary and they also can get worse over time. So typically it just for me personally isn't a morph that I support or something that I would personally purchase. Egret happened to be rehomed to me by someone who couldn't keep her anymore, which is why I ended up taking her. And I love her. She is a beautiful snake. And when she was smaller, when I first got her, her issues really weren't that bad. It's just gotten a lot worse. Just, you know, just hanging out in her enclosure, uh, flipping upside down for fun. Like, she just never did that before, so it's gotten a lot worse. She still eats like a champ every single meal. She just devours everything. You know, just her neurological issues aside, she is a healthy snake. So I still feel like she has like life in her and she still is doing well enough that I am not going to euthanize her at this point, but I'm just worried it will eventually get to that point. And I've also been pondering downgrading her into a little bit of a smaller enclosure just so it might be hopefully easier for her to navigate and she'll have more things to grab onto and you know it just won't be as big as open and maybe she won't like fall as much i don't know i don't know if that makes sense but i just feel like it might be safer for her or easier for her if she were in a smaller enclosure especially with how bad her issues are getting and then once she's actually a little bit bigger I could move her back into a bigger enclosure when it makes more sense but just with her issues I don't know if it's benefiting her to have like this big open huge enclosure so that's something that I'm still deciding upon you guys can let me know your opinion down below about that I would love to hear uh, your opinion on that or if you think it would be helpful for her to be in something a little bit smaller but I just thought I would let you guys know so you know, if you see her in my videos and she's acting a lot worse, you're not surprised. And also, you know, just to put out there that do not get snakes that have the jaguar gene. Like if you're gonna get a carpet python, don't get a jaguar. If you're gonna get a ball python, it's like the same thing. I mean, you can if you want to, and again, you might end up lucky and end up with a snake whose issues just aren't very bad, but for the snakes that do have really bad issues, I just don't see that it's worth it. I don't know, that's just my opinion and my take on it based on my experience with my snake who I just see like, you know, doing like this in her enclosure with her body all the time and she doesn't really seem to know what's going on. I don't think it's very nice. If I were a snake, I would not want to be living like that probably. So yeah, that's how Egret's doing. Not thriving, but she is, she is doing, um, she's doing something. So next, I wanted to update you guys on Olive. It's been about a year, I think. My perception of time is very off, so maybe it's been more than a year, but it's been about a year, I think, since uh, my Flemish giant Desmond passed away, and Olive and Desmond were best buddies, so I was worried about how Olive was going to take it and she ended up being pretty okay like she was off for the first couple weeks but overall she's been doing really well actually and everything's been really good with her and i've just been kind of pondering what to do because i do feel really bad about keeping her alone without other rabbits because she did so well with desmond and they just loved each other so much i think i have pretty much come to the conclusion that i'm going to end up getting another rabbit to pair with her uh, just so she can have another little friend with her and 
yeah, that's basically just the conclusion I've come up with. I haven't done it yet because of the pandemic and stuff because I need to take her to a local rescue to meet a bunch of rabbits and see who she gets along with. And I just didn't really want to do that yet, but we're kind of coming up to a point where I think it's going to be a good time and I can go and help her find a buddy and then she can be a bonded pair with another rabbit again. So I'm really excited for that. Yeah, I'm gonna get all of a little friend, but she's been really good. I've just been slacking on the rabbit content, so I'm sorry about that. I will try to improve. Say bye, Olive. Say bye. Olive's like, please put me back because I don't like being in your arms. Okay, let's go. Good night. Next, I wanted to update you guys on Momo. <laughs> no one really asks how Momo's doing usually, actually. Everyone always says yee-haw, but no one ever asks ha ye. I wanted to update you guys on her anyways because I haven't really talked about her very much recently. So yeah, Momo's doing good. Um, she is getting a little bit older, which makes me really sad. So I have noticed her slowing down a little bit, but overall she's still doing good. Like she still runs on her wheel and she still gets around and eats good and all that stuff. So yeah, Momo is just thriving. Those are all the updates that I wanted to give you. If I didn't bring someone up, just know that they are probably doing fine. Um, I obviously can't sit here and update you guys on everything, but like I said, I do have a Meet My Pets video that is going to be in the works very soon. So you're gonna see everyone that I have there. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here. Check out all my social media links. Those will be down in the description below. And I will see you guys in my next video.